Well, hey guys. Oh, hi. Welcome to That's Sick. Welcome. Vilkaman. Vilkaman. I'm I'm Justine. I'm Heather. I'm JB. I'm your host this week. Yeah. We are on episode 20. Somehow. I don't know how that happened. Dos Equis, yeah. the most interesting episode in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm the best. Um, you just came up with that, too, because you didn't even know what episode it was. I didn't. Yeah, I'm just that fucking clever, dogs. Episode Dos Equis from the seat of your pants. XX. Oh, and then in other words, it's been 10 whole episodes since you guys almost ruined me with the cannibalism. Uh, stories oh that was in the way way back we're, know, we're already over that in the before times in the long long ago we've only just talked about cannibalism last week <laughs> that's true <laughs> and i uh, it's definitely not even gonna be the last time no we're probably we, also true it always comes down to consuming human flesh with us yeah well speak for yourself yeah i i'm not speaking for myself this is a disclaimer i do not eat human flesh <laughs> <laughs> thank god for that uh, so i don't know what we're gonna talk about this week however i'm excited they're gonna try to gross me out it's hard to do not impossible but hard to do i think i'm i might succeed this week justine looks extremely fucking pleased with herself so i'm <laughs> i love when people are able to gross me out yeah but before we get into all of that what sick things you guys got going on this week what's your sickest thing of the week mine isn't very good you okay go first. it's basically well, it's basically the chicken nugget that I literally just <laughs> ate literally an hour ago had a piece of gristel in it. That's a good week, though. If that's your sickest thing, that's a good week. Yeah. Yeah. It's not not a bad week. Are you going to call out where you got that chimkin nugget? I got the chimkin nugget at the McDonald's down on Route 8. Mickey not D's. not five minutes from this from this <laughs> spot. It, I actually I mean, luckily, it was the last nugget. So it didn't ruin my overall experience. I hate eating a thing of gristle. That's like the nastiest shit. It, yeah, it was very, it was very off-putting. Ugh. So, yeah. But hey, that's a reminder that there was real chicken in that nugget. So, pro? No, I guess. I didn't think so. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was reaching. That was a reach. Is it because the gristle is the cartilage? I don't know. I just assume it's a real fucking part of the chicken. Oh. It's not just like tenderized, motorized meat. I guess not motorized. Yeah, I think it's, I think it is cartilage. Yeah, or, or said i don't know what's extra beak i don't know lips and assholes lips and assholes yum 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 i don't have a grossest thing of the week i couldn't think of one i apologize mm. i'm boring yeah no me neither unfortunately i have a i have a pro but i don't have a con wait so i just win by default with yeah. that Hell sad yeah. story chicken gristle for the win you win wow. some, you win some leftover halloween candy Ta -da. Ta -da. well does it matter who goes first this week um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. Since uh, Justine, you were the winner. You can choose to go first or you can uh, pass it to Heather. Oh, that's nice. Like uh, the <laughs> price is right. Yeah. I, better pass. Better pass. I choose to go first so I can get Ooh, out of the way. Get, a bid. But, get it out of the way. But, All right. Uh, Heather, I would like Heather to reveal this week's theme because it was her idea. Okay. The theme uh, is secret. Ooh, oh, Sick you know secrets. me. Oh. Sick Ooh. secrets. Oh, I got the pee tingles. <laughs> uh, yeah, secrets. Secrets. I know, I know it's vague, but we uh, That's we That's really like that fucking here. vague. Are you guys both Pisces now? No. I'm always very upfront and honest, but I, I want Justine to do her thing. Okay. All right. So, Tell me your secrets. <clears throat> so, you know, I got to thinking. It's not always obvious from the outside what you can find inside someone's house is it you never know what you goes on never below, know. behind closed doors never sometimes no dude never assume especially sexual stuff never ever assume like what someone's sex life is like because like are you trying to tell us something no i'm just saying that like the she's people, making a point yeah the people that i know in my life that you think were like the most boring as shit have sometimes been the freakiest deakiest and like you can never assume like because what happens behind closed doors eva well in, eva. This, in this case i'm not talking about freaky sex shit <laughs> But I am talking about hoarding. Uh, oh, no. Hoarding is so gross. Oh, my God. There's so many gross things with hoarding. I told you uh, I was going to gross you out this yeah. week. Uh, are you going to talk about people shoveling dead cats? Oh, fuck. Come All on. Right. So, Bring it on, bitch. Okay. So full disclosure. Uh, shoveling cats. <laughs> originally, that was going to be part of this. And I actually I made a game time decision to not 
use that part of my research because it was too upsetting. It was too in the yeah. arms of the angels. It was for too, Justine. yeah. All right, so, well, so at I least we, we are on the same page I, with that. She was so emotional, baby. I didn't want to cry on the podcast, so... Oh, no, so we don't want that. No tears. There's no crying baby. in podcast. So, um, I watched... What I, what I did for my research for this, I literally Googled grossest cases of hoarding. Oh, and my then, God. You went straight for the throat. Yeah, yeah. And of course, <laughs> what do you think this podcast <laughs> is about? <laughs> So and then the internet told me um, what the uh, consensus was on the grossest and worst episodes of Hoarders. Mm-hmm. Um, Yikes. W- one of which is the one that I will not be talking about because it's I about dead cats. Yeah. Uh, and, I, I, and I can't. But um, the other one I did watch and it is uh, it is about a, a woman named Shauna. And before I dig into it, uh, I, you know, I'm going to do the same kind of reminder that Hoarders does at the beginning of the episode, which is hoarding is a manifestation of a mental illness. And, you know, we need to be compassionate about these people. So we're not I'm not here to we're not going to be laughing and making fun of this woman. I know you guys aren't. But just so our listeners are clear, because it's like, you know, it's a disease and it it does suck. Although it is also gross. It is. But it is gross. Yeah. Yes. We're cringing. I don't think it's funny, but I do think a lot of it is sad and gross. So. I literally just my research involved watching an episode of Hoarders, so that was interesting. I had to keep hitting pause so I could write my notes and catch up. Oh, that oh yeah, that's how I I did some of my shit this week too. Oh yeah, yeah. Season six, episode four. I I also should point out I have not watched an episode of Hoarders in really freaking long time. So the whole like reality construct was very amusing to me, just in general. You know, with all the like the music and the editing and the whatever so reality is a construct man <laughs> yeah isn't it just like gender and time it's all <laughs> social constructs mm-hmm. so we're introduced to shauna's home with shots that show it totally covered in trash so all of the surfaces um just garbage everywhere so just like literally you there, no, no floor no floor no counters no surfaces anywhere it's just all all trash and is there any pathway or you're stepping on you're stepping trash? over the trash Sick. oh yeah. okay you're stepping over the trash. It's they do close ups that look very crusty. Crust and everything rotting. has to be crusty. Yeah. Yes. And this kind of like it does, it spills out into the yard. So the yard's not as bad as the inside of the house, but you can definitely tell, um, you know, there's some major shit going on. So just a little bit of backstory, like before. So getting up to the point where, you know, the hoarders comes in to film, um, a neighbor had called her house into the city and they started fining her $250 a day. And so the show brings us in when she's about to lose the house to the city because she she owes thousands and thousands of dollars in fines. She, Shauna moved into the house to live with her mother uh, 13 years before this episode aired in 2012. And her mom was already a hoarder and having the two of them there just made it twice as bad. Um, And Shauna, like one of the things we learn about Shauna over the course of the episode is that she just really kind of like absorbed her mother's behaviors didn't really question them just kind of like rolled with everything so you know behaviors that would seem really odd to us shauna just was like oh well this is how she's doing it so i'm just gonna like follow this is these house rules these are that's what happens to like most people like their their families have like their own uh quirks and traits and stuff and you just kind of assume that's how everybody is sometimes like yeah. uh like that famous reddit story the poop knife story oh like, yeah, yes. the poop knife. that yeah. guy he is you know he just assumed everybody had a poop knife but really well, it was just his family well actually <laughs> I, th- I think what happened was like i mean most people do not have a poop knife but i think it turned out that a couple people did it wasn't just his family but it well, was I'm like sure, extremely uh, yeah. like rare but yeah i thought that that was yeah that that was not something i ever thought of before i i never thought i would have to cut out my poop no yeah. for clarification a poop knife is a knife that you keep near your toilet to cut up your extremely like dense and fudgy poops that won't go down the toilet right you maybe they're just eating pumpkin seeds all the time oh uh, maybe yeah. yeah you know it's to prevent clogs and overflows you know it's an ele- i guess an elegant solution but yeah i've never had to cut up my poops my poops have all gone down no problem so anyway we're, you, for you guys, the record it's you recorded guys, you let guys. Her, let's let her talk I'm sorry no, listen we're gonna talk enough about poop over the next like 20-30 minutes or so <clears> so <throat> buckle up ah uh, okay 
So anyway, oh, you got your girls here. We can talk poop. I know. Mm-hmm. So according to Shauna, the turning point was when her mother discontinued trash pickup to the house. You can imagine like, and I know, I know some, some people don't have trash pickup to their Why? house. No need. We don't need that um, service. I'm guessing it was m- money mm. cir- circumstances. They probably to save money. It wasn't just because she wanted to keep all the trash. I don't. It wasn't made clear, but I'm guessing it was a money thing. Okay. But, you know, so and I know it can be quite normal for people to not have trash pickup at their house. But most people will then make the effort to haul it to the dump on a regular basis, which um, these two did not. Um, <laughs> Shocker. And, and actually, I guess um, I think it was Shauna's brother says in an interview that at one point he offered to get a U-Haul and help them haul garbage to the dump, but it never happened because like Sean would have to go through every bag of trash before letting him take it away. And so they would just never get around to doing it. Because I've seen hoarders like they're deeply connected to like every bit of their trash. And well, they want to make sure that um, they're not getting rid of anything useful that they could still use. Quote unquote useful. Right. Um, So the mom passed away about two years before this episode is being recorded and so sean has been living alone since then and her sister actually believes that her mom's death could be at least partially attributed to the very 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 bad living conditions so i guess there um it was cancer and and the family kind of suspects that or they believe i don't know if it's just like them saying it or if there's actually evidence but they believe that the mom would still be alive if it wasn't for the hoarder house and to kind of like tie up this portion of it, um, the brother notes that he, um, to him, he thinks that smelling a corpse would be easier than smelling this house. Yikes. That says a corpse lot. Corpse smell real bad. Yeah. So, there, so there's your setup. This is what we're walking into. We're just going to say we're walking into corpse smell, which is a bad smell. So the main horror of this particular episode and why the internet has ranked it as one of the worst, if not the worst hoarders episode of all time is that the toilet doesn't function in this house. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. And, and, no. Ha- and has not functioned for a very long time. No. Oh no. I th- oh, no. oh no. Keep going. So remember when I said that Shauna kind of like, you know, rolled with her, what, you know, her mom's habits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so her mom was in the habit of shitting into a bucket. <laughs> As you do. Yep. And, you know, and then collecting uh, the, the shit water because, you know, the all just you know, the pee and the poop and all that and collecting it into jugs. Oh, my God. OK. And et cetera. And so um, so Shauna just, you know, just like, cool. I guess that's what we do. And so um, even though, you know, the mom's been dead for a couple of years. Um, yeah. And it's it's not clear. It wasn't clear how the toilet was broken. Um, at one point, Shauna mentions a septic system. And the implication is that the septic system isn't working. So I don't know if it was like, I, I don't I don't really know the circumstances. But no matter what it was, it, apparently the two of them felt it was psychologically easier to use buckets as toilets instead of getting someone in to fix the problem, which... Uh... Which is I, which is a big part of, you know, the hoarder mindset. Is I, this yeah. is like, this is oh god. Heather, describe the look on my face right now. Yeah, it's like just very bleak. <laughs> it's bleak. Bleak is the perfect way to describe it. Because like you're gonna tell me what they do with the poop. <gasps> yeah. You know, like um, okay, after they shit in the bucket, it has to, they have to do something with well, it. So okay, so what or do, they do they not do anything with it? What do they do with well, it? Well, I'm gonna get there. <laughs> Patience. So I and I just want to put out this little nugget too um so even though the mom has been dead for two years shauna has held on to the bucket that she used and it's still crusted with poop fuck oh yeah that's a memory no i'm sorry i'm sorry i yelled fuck into the microphone but i didn't know that was going to be my reaction (laughs) i it came out of me like a like a poltergeist you know after your parent shuffles off this mortal coil it's nice to have something that they've left behind I love my parents very much and I will be <laughs> very sad when they leave this planet, but I do not want to be stuck with their, their shit crust. Shit bucket crust. Oh, oh, oh. So Sh- Shauna, Shauna has her own buckets that she uses. She actually has more than one. And so in this, so we're still in like the kind of first part of the episode. So um, for people who haven't seen Hoarders, it's kind of at least this episode, you start, you start out with kind of the person on their own kind of like, 
giving you know giving us the context and like introducing us to how they live and then you have the like the professionals come in and like try to knock sense into them so we're still in that first part before anyone's knocking sense into her so right now it's really just this like camera crew and i'm assuming a producer which holy crap no pun intended can, can you imagine being on that crew those poor people i know uh. um so no. So Shauna's like telling the telling the camera, like telling the producer that when the bucket is full, that was a really good burp. Thank you. you I mean, feel free to just burp right into the mic. It's totally fine. I know. Okay. I, it's, 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 on, it's on brand. It is on brand burping. Yeah. Oh anyway. So you asked what happens. You know, what do they do with it? Yeah. So she she's telling us, well, when the when the bucket fills up and, she, you know, can't use that bucket anymore so it doesn't overflow mm-hmm. um she says it's really hard to lift up it's very heavy so what what she does her solution is uh she uses this like it almost looks like a measuring cup and she uses it to transfer the waste into a smaller bucket mm-hmm. which she is able to lift and then takes it outside and dumps it in the yard and then she just repeats the process oh. And she's dumping it just in the yard, like, like not. Did she dig a hole? No. So they didn't have a medieval toilet. No, and we and and this and she and we see this process on camera. So we watch her. Mm-hmm. We watch her use the cup to transfer into the smaller bucket. We watch her pick it up. We watch her carry it, like walk over all that. Remember, every surface is covered in trash. So she's like walking over and all probably this like trash, dripping like piss and shit water everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um. And yeah, and she goes out into the yard and throws it into the yard. Throws. Just throws it. Yes. Oh my Doesn't God. like like you'd throw water you know, dish water. Yeah. That is really like that's so like her yard is a cesspit. Yes. Cesspool, Literally. Little yes. cesspool. Like that is like a disease factory. It's right like ext- there. I mean, that's I can't even I can't even imagine that's legal. No. Because you're contaminate it's like contaminating can you imagine groundwater. She's the contaminating runoff? the groundwater. Yeah. Because yeah. nasty ass medieval people had it together more than this. Oh my god! Yeah, she. Ugh. So, um, during this segment, she tells us, um, she not, she acknowledges that her neighbors might think that it's odd, and that's the word she uses. Nope, gross. odd. Um, but no one has ever said anything to her, so she figures it's fine. So that just gives you, you know, and again, like you know, we have to remember she's mentally ill. So you know, this is um, mentally ill people often aren't rational. Or have a hard time telling, you know, the different like what's what's real and what's not real, and so you know it just gives you an ex- like insight into her like how her brain works. Yeah, I, she says that nobody said anything to her, but I bet you, I mean, there's a reason why hoarders is here now. Like right. somebody has said something now. Yes. Well, I mean, her. I, I I'm pretty sure it's her family that yeah. has gone to hoarders because yeah. they they know about the problem. Yeah. So um, now we're at the part where the, the a professional from the show comes over. So um, Matt, he's the cleaning. He's like the guy who's like the expert cleaner. In a hazmat suit, mm-hmm. I assume. He comes over um, to, and he first wants to spend one night in the house to get a sense of how Shauna manages her life there. Oh, my God. That brave man. Yeah. Well, and the first and the very first thing he says he's, is that the smell of the house is one of the worst things he's ever smelled in his life. And his job is as a professional cleaner of extremely bad places. Yeah, he's living. It's like poo house. Yeah, poo yeah. porter, poo porter. So, um, so he's in the house, and he's and Shauna's showing him around, and you know, show, shows him like shows him a poop bucket. You know, explains that process. Here's my shit bucket. Um, and oh um. And she's so uh, at this point now she's she's like getting ready to prepare herself dinner. And uh, he and she reveals in response to a question that he just asked that she doesn't wash her hands after handling the poop buckets. Oh, oh. no. Oh, yeah. Ugh, I was just, I, you could assume that. But the confirmation is just still disappointing. Ugh. Her dinner is canned soup in a paper bowl cooked in a toaster oven. Mm. She says that sometimes it does burn a little. Yeah, that sounds like uh, that sounds like she's gonna light her house on fire as well. Um, and at that, that point, Marty even heated gas. us. Yeah. Oh. Um, and at this point, Matt notes that she's eating the soup about two feet from where there's a poop bucket. Oh, God, even animals don't like eat where they shit. Yep. Just saying. 
Sorry, being harsh. I know it's a mental illness. Right. So my God. Well, and that's I think, you know, that's kind of that line. It's like it's fascinating to us. It's like and horrible. It's like it's like watching a train wreck and, you know, it's not, you know. Yeah. So I've watched a little bit of these hoarders shows and I know that um, most of the time it seems like they definitely are, are beyond the help that the show can offer like at that time like these are people that need like years and years of psychotherapy yeah so actually i um, i was reading an interview with matt as i was doing this research and he does it he acknowledges that he acknowledges the exploitation factor but he notes that they actually they'll turn down people who they feel are too like too far gone or too much like to like really be able to gain anything from the show i imagine and as we get through it you'll see why i imagine shauna was probably borderline like yeah. too much but they do definitely make a point of of showing like and of like talking through so it's not just them coming in and cleaning out the house they like make them participate and like face yeah i know the yeah. situation um, so at this point, it's super clear, like we just said, um, she doesn't understand how bad her situation is. Um, you can tell that she knows sh- she's thinking of it as like messy, like maybe the way I would say <laughs> my apartment's a mess, which it is, but it's not. <laughs> I, can't ima- I can't imagine living in a place like that. But she's under the impression that it's not so bad. And she thinks that the so-called musty smell in the house is from mold and dust. So Ugh. at this point, Matt asks her... Um, what, like, does she know how bad it smells? And and she said, well, I, my, my, you know, my sisters said that it smells musty. She said, I can't really smell it because you get, you know, you get used to what your house mm-hmm. smells like. Just smelling um, her own poopies 24-7. So she is so Shauna has concluded that the musty smell is from mold and dust. And Matt tells her it's actually because of the, the feces and the urine that's everywhere in the house. And she is shocked, like. The look on her face, she she's like flabbergasted and not she doesn't deny it. She doesn't like argue about it. She's it's just more she's it's more of like a like, huh? Oh, wow. I never I didn't that, think that, my that shit never, pissed stunk. That never occurred to me. It, it was literally like, oh, that never occurred to me. That urine um, and feces smells or, yeah. the, or that there is so much of it like that was the cause of the problem. Oh, my God. At this point, Matt, there's just like a throwaway mention. He mentions that in addition to the poop everywhere, there's bloody tampons all over the floor. Oh, God. Oh. But yeah, of course. Right. I mean, that's not surprising. Yay. So next, um, the psychologist comes in, Dr. Um, Zazio. Uh, and yes. also, I'm, I'm like, really, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing all these names. Dr. Um, Sasha Fierce. So um, she specializes in hoarding and OCD. And I imagine I'm not a, like I said, I, I just watched this episode for research. I think she's like, I think she and Matt are in probably most all of the episodes. So um, in addition to Dr. Zazio, they also bring in junk removers and biohazard specialists. And everyone in the house now has on biohazard suits and respirators. Yeah, I would mm-hmm. assume Because it's extremely, to. extremely dangerous to be in that Toxic. house. Toxic. So first up, they tackle the kitchen. And here we learn that Shauna does not want to get rid of any of the packaged food she has. So think like um, like things of oatmeal, like those like single serve oatmeal cups and like cans of beans, like things like that. Soup. All the things that are covered in poop germs right now. It, well, exactly. So she doesn't want to throw it out because um, it's she says, well, it's most of this has never even been opened. It's still good. And. Um, Dr. Zazio has to keep like saying to her, but it's covered in toxic, like it's like covered in contaminants. Like, do you really want to like eat something that like, even though, yes, it's still packaged, but as soon as you open it, it's going to like tie And so she's like trying to explain it to her. Um, they come upon a loaf of bread that's completely covered in mold. Ew. Shauna doesn't want to throw it out um, because she'll just pick the mold off. That's perfectly good penicillin. Yep. No, yeah. it's well, I mean, just pick the mold off and that's perfectly oh, good bread. Yeah. <laughs> um, to her, it's the logical result of she, she's like, well, I don't have a refrigerator. So, of course, there's mold on it. She's like, this is just normal. This is just what happens to bread when you don't. It there's is also, what happens, but you should need it. Well, she also like she has uh, she has like a thing of like lettuce that comes in like a plastic package and she um, doesn't have a fridge. So this has just been sitting in like a bag and just in the middle of the kitchen or whatever for like two weeks and she's like well i just got that two weeks ago and like two weeks isn't even years that's bad in the fridge after two weeks let alone sitting out 
you know, on the table. So she really like just doesn't seem to have like she can't grasp the concept of like food that's good to eat. That's okay to eat. Right. And this is really a sticking point for her. She is and she's very uh, she's very upset about the idea of wasting food. This really upsets her a lot. So um, after some arguing with Matt and Dr. Zazio, she comes up with a compromise. She says she wants to eat some of her contaminated food one last time before they throw everything out. Her logic is that she's been eating poop covered food for over a decade now, and she wants to go out in what she calls a blaze of glory and compares it to a junkie wanting one last hit. Oh so my fuck? God. And Dr. Zazio, it, when like when they do like a one on like a, like an interview with her um she said she's dumbfounded like she appears dumbfounded by the fact that shauna is appearing to take pleasure in knowingly eating contaminated food yeah that's like, that's a thing i don't know what thing that is but i don't that's, i don't either i've all. never been on that drug jesus so back to the poop and pee drugs oh, jugs good. not drugs <laughs> jugs <laughs> so these jugs are everywhere there are plastic jugs like think like trucker bombs like like yeah like uh like that you'd maybe get water and like not um not that you would put in a water dispenser but like you know not like milk jugs bigger than a milk jug clear plastic yeah yeah they're everywhere they're all over the house all over the backyard it's and i it's just i don't even i don't even understand i really don't at one point in the bathroom, Matt wants to trash everything in the bathroom. He's just like, this should all go. And Shauna points out, but the toothbrushes are covered in plastic. With the implication being that she should be able to keep this. <laughs> Jen just like opened her mouth and then closed it again. I just don't understand why they don't just raise the entire house. Like they just, well, they should be condemning it and we're just get, like we're getting there. imploding it. We're getting there. Okay. So um, so because these jugs are such a biohazard, um, the team is collecting them in bagged large trash cans and then one by one emptying the jugs out first into like what looks like a portage on. But then later they bring in a septic truck to suck up all the waste as they empty the jugs into large trash cans. Portable septic. Tank. Yeah. So I'm actually about to answer like a couple questions that you guys have brought up. So by the end of the episode, Dr. Zazio has concluded that Shauna can't live alone. Because of how much she can't comprehend what her situation turned into and how it's like literally toxic to her health. Like she's yeah. basically killing herself. There's just some people that, that they, yeah. cannot su- they cannot support themselves. They cannot take care of themselves. Blaze right. of glory. Yeah. And blaze of glory. Poop glaze. Blaze of glory. And so then to answer your other question, which you just asked, um, after they clear everything out so they have then someone is able to inspect the house because they don't know how bad it is until they can get everything out and the house is the house is completely ruined yeah it is not salvageable um kelsey freeze yeah so the guy said that if they wanted to save the house they would have to strip everything to the studs and completely renovate it and that it would actually be less expensive to bulldoze the house and build a new one than to save the existing house. Right. So that's where they leave that episode. Dang. Because I've definitely seen ones where they have to go in and clean everything and they have to like pull the carpets. Yeah. But then they're like, oh, actually underneath there really wasn't any structural damage or maybe we have to replace the floor in the bathroom right. or something. And, then you sanit- and it's not a big deal. And you sanitize and you move on. Um, You know, a few weeks ago maybe like a month or so ago we talked about cleaning up after like death like gory bloody death in hotels and that whole process yeah you can like imagine that you know you can sanitize and clean up and salvage a room after that and this was worse yeah impossible what is decades it was 12 well it was it was well it's 13 years of shauna living with her mom but you remember her mom was already a hoarder so I and it wasn't as bad as it was with both of them there, but yeah. So yeah, it probably. But it, but the the poop thing was probably. It only wasn't. It wasn't clear. Years. It wasn't clear when the toilet stopped yeah. being usable. Um, at one point, at one point, like Matt is talking to Sean about it and asks her, like, you know, she's explaining to him why she uses the buckets, and 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 she's like, well, because the toilet's broken. Like, silly. She doesn't say silly, but that's the tone of her voice. And he says. But why didn't you call someone in to fix it? And she gets this like she kind of like turns to the side and gets this. It's it, it's the look on her face like she again, she doesn't argue with it. It's, and it's almost like it's a combination of like 
not even that it didn't occur to her, but like that she couldn't even begin to explain why she couldn't call someone to come fix it. It was just it was fast. It was fascinating to see. So, yeah. Did I gross you out, JB? Yeah. Yeah. That was that was disgusting. <laughs> I hated it. I, I yelled fuck really loud into the microphone twice. So. I, yeah. I told you I'd do it unexpectedly yes yeah. unexpectedly so, unexpectedly that was the only reaction i had within me is just go <laughs> fuck <laughs> yeah so um so i did i did watch a second episode because i was, I was going to talk through two um like the two like what everyone says these are the grossest episodes ever but like i said the second one is about a cat hoarder and it's really 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 sad it um, is so oh, i think i saw that one and they're just like oh is that where muffin was <laughs> And like muffin was like under behind the toilet or something. It's is it's fucking it's it's fucking is? horrible. Yeah. It really is. It sucks. So, it sucks so bad. So I'm just gonna say I'm sorry, it's funny. Dear listeners, if you don't love cats and you know, and you wanna be grossed out by something really, really, really <laughs> gross, then I recommend you watch Hoarders season six, episode eight. You won't be disappointed. But if you love cats, don't watch it because it was horrible and I cried. And that's all I got. I literally think one of the cats did die behind the toilet. I L- think lucky. We thought you ran away. You were unlucky. <laughs> well, Justine, thank you for successfully grossing me out. You're welcome. I I mean, that was like a really half ass thank you. But uh thank you. <laughs> uh, anytime. Please don't do that anytime. No, thank you uh heather what what you got for me girl so uh i also have a secret like our theme is secrets so secret mine is a secret that somebody held in their house allow me to interject for one second will my snickers be enhanced or horrified if i unwrap it and eat it right now uh it's gonna take a little bit for me to get to the gross part okay so if you want to eat your snickers i do it won't get gross for a little bit all right. I got to give you a little, get that nice little crackling. Oh, that's <laughs> loud. All right. I'm the full I like that. I didn't know we were an well, ASMR podcast. In that case, I'm going to open up my Twix. <laughs> this is the week after Halloween and Heather still has so much Halloween candy because she was the motherfucking baller who gave out full size candy bars. Yeah. So all the regular size candy is here and we're eating it. And by regular, you mean fun size. Fun size. Yeah. It's fun size. Yeah. Here's my Milky Way. <laughs> If you guys want to know what candy sounds like, man. Yeah. All right. So, and uh, we've already talked about what our favorite candy bars are. I was Milky Way. JB was Take Five. Our mouths are full of candy. We can't talk right now. And Justine, your favorite candy bar was Twix? No, Kit Kat. Kit Kat. Kit Kat. Okay. So, my, I found out, I kind of stumbled upon my topic. I was watching the iconic documentary called Paris is Burning, directed by Jenny Livingston about the 1980s, uh, early 90s ball culture in New York City. So you uh, can see a dramatized version of this on FX's show Pose, which is amazing. And amazing. Yeah. After watching the show and watching the documentary, you can see like how much they directly lifted from Paris is Burning. I uh, believe I've talked about it before, but Billy Porter Pittsburgh hometown hero won Best Actor Emmy for that show last month. So ball culture. What's ball culture? Uh, Balls were events that were held where members of, quote, houses walked in categories to win trophies. The people involved in the culture were part of the uh, trans, gay, Latinx, uh, black, uh, black communities. They were many times people that were turned out on the street by their families. They were, uh, you know, unfortunately abandoned by their families. They formed their own families or houses, which the matriarchs and patriarchs of the community of these communities act as surrogate mothers and fathers to all these homeless youths. So the subject of my story today, Dorian Corey is a subject in this documentary. And she's quoted as saying, I'll tell you what a house is. A house is a gay street gang. Now, where street gangs get their rewards from street fights, a gay house fights at a ball. And you street fight at the ball by walking in the category. So balls were events where these people could express their creativity and be glamorous. It was an escape from reality. The homelessness and uh, the ravages of AIDS that was just attacking this community. Absolute epidemic during this time. 
it was really like unimaginable amounts of stress that like you can't imagine what could be pressed upon like one small minority of people like have just like a massive one two punch so what did these balls look like contestants walked they vogued you might have heard vogued you know vogue like madonna they invented voguing. they invented voguing before madonna you know stole it stole it they danced they posed they modeled extravagant clothes and looks so categories were many and varied some examples from wikipedia <laughs> uh, and from the show in general like femme queen realness participants were judged on their ability to blend in with cisgender women runway would be walking like a supermodel and that got more popular and more popular once people like chrissy turlington cindy crawford naomi campbell you know all those like amazing late 80s early 90s supermodels they were the face categories where you were judged on who had the most classically beautiful face there was best dress and there was all kinds of categories for voguing you know new voguer butch voguing femme voguing if you ever saw RuPaul's Drag Race, this all the stuff might be sounding familiar, you know, because it's all a, an evolution from that time. So terms like reading, realness, shade, all that was described and defined in Paris's burning, you know, and that's what you, you hear that like constantly when you watch that, you know, all, in, in RuPaul's songs, you know, the realness. Yeah, it's actually, <laughs> as you know, I guess for those of us, because when, when Paris is burning came out, we were very young. Like we yeah. were like, what? I, I probably was like eight or nine, I yeah. think. Yeah. So, you know, because we so we started with RuPaul and then going. So going back and like in time and seeing where like all of that RuPaul, like all the drag race, like and, and, and current drag culture, too. So I'll even like say, like, I'm not familiar with drag culture much beyond RuPaul's drag race. race. But yeah, it's like watching that documentary and seeing where like, it all came from yeah and be like oh i recognize that and it's, it's been around for a long time it's really cool like it may, yeah. people may have only heard of these terms only a couple years ago or paid attention to them but they've been around since you know forever yeah so um i watched this documentary i was transfixed you know so after it was over i immediately had to google you know the subjects and be like what what became of them i had to find out what was going on now because it's now like what 20 years 30 years later you know Things have happened since then. So the one person that I would like to focus on and talk about, like I mentioned before, is Dorian Corey. So she is a very interesting person. I was very taken with her when watching the documentary. She is a drag queen that is extremely extravagant. Uh, she has like fabulous costumes. She's kind of uh, describes herself as the old school wearing like showgirl type costumes. She had gone to Parsons School of Design, which may sound familiar if you ever watch Project Runway. Tim Gunn is a Parsons School of Design professor. Um, so she once constructed a gown with a train so huge that it covered the entire ballroom floor. Like, she was just ridiculous. And uh, like kind of like a matriarch. Like, she was a matriarch of her house, the house of Corey. So she mentored a lot of the young sons and daughters, you know. So there's one quote that she famously has at the very end of the documentary that I kind of like, I want to just go through and just, I'm just going to say the whole quote line for line just because it's just like, I think it just encapsulates her. So it goes, I always had hopes of being a star. And when you get older, you start to aim a little lower and you say, well, you still might make an impression. Everybody wants to leave something behind them, some impression, some mark upon the world. And then you think you left a mark upon the world if you just get through it. And a few people remember your name and then you've left your mark. You don't have to bend the whole world. And I think it's best to just enjoy it. Pay your dues and enjoy it. And if you shoot an arrow and it goes real high, hooray for you. <laughs> so I just like really like that. I was just like, well, you know, just try and enjoy life as it is because it's like pretty rough out there. And if, if you do good and like you do something and people tend to take notice and you get a lot of accolades, like whoop de doo you know, that's all right. Good for you. So uh, let's get to the sick part of this whole story. That's the whole point about why we're here. Yeah, because so, so, so far, not much. No, no. this isn't no. sick. This, this is fine. No. It just makes me want to it makes me want to watch Paris is burning. Yeah, again. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just have to give the whole I want to give the whole background because like it's good context. Yeah. Yeah. You need you need the context. So. I Googled her 
And after she, after Paris's burning, Dorian Corey died of AIDS-related complications in 1993 at the age of 56, so like not, many men of his generation. So not too long after the documentary came out. Right. Yeah. So not too long. Absolutely. Uh, I think it was only like two years. Right. Something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. After she died, Louis Taylor, her friend and caregiver, was clearing out her vast closet of costumes. Now, before Dorian died, she specifically told Taylor to do this, you know, take what you want and then just sell the rest. So as they were doing so, they came across a garment bag that was green plaid in color. The bag was heavier than it expected it to be. They inspected it and they tried to open it, but they couldn't find a zipper. Hmm. Curious. So Taylor grabbed some scissors and started to cut the bag open, which released a smell that they knew unmistakably to be that of decomposing flesh. No! Oh! Immediately, they called the cops because they're like, I know what this is. As a member of the trans community in New York back then, unfortunately, you came in contact with death. More often than the right. average person. Right. Mm-hmm. So they knew what this, this was. This was dead body smell. Yeah. They called the cops. They're like, oh, my God. The cops came. And uh, after they came and gave their interview, Taylor left. She did not stick around. She knew there was a dead body in the bag and she did not want to see it. She's quoted as saying, you look at something like that. And honey, that's something you don't ever get over for the rest of your life. Oh, God. So not wrong. Yeah, not no. wrong. That's good advice. So the body, it was a body. It was in the fetal position. Oh, with no. A bullet hole. <gasps> in its oh, head. OK. Oh, it was wrapped up in Naga hide and plastic bags. Naga hide is like a, a synthetic latex. Uh, sy- sorry, synthetic Leathery. leather. Yes. Right, right, right. The body was half mummified, half decomposed. Ooh. The skin was a yellowy, purpley, mottled. Uh, this body was sealed off from air and plastic, air by the plastic and naga hide, but that didn't like, can, it didn't prevent it from completely like decomposing. Like it was sort of like, that's why it was half mummified. Like the right. air. It decomposed to like to the amount was, of air that was in there. Right. Like right. there's bacteria in the gut, in the belly that was like eating away at the body from the inside but at the same time it was sealed from air and like outside elements so it was just kind of like stewing in its own juices like kind of like it would be in a coffin yeah yeah releases it all of the bodily fluids because we are you know 80 like whatever 70 some percent water Mm -hmm. the other the one interesting thing was when they opened up when the police you know inspectors they peeled back all the plastic and stuff. There were these beer can pool tabs that fell out of the body bag as well. And the police used this to estimate that the body was between 15 to 20 years old. What? It had been <gasps> in this closet for 20 years. <gasps> So since 1973. Yeah, for a long fucking time. So who was this body body? soup? Who was the body? It turned out to be an ex-lover of Corey's named Robert Worley. He was known to be abusive of Corey in the past and had been in jail previously for rape and assault. So not a good guy. Um, We'll never really know how the body actually got there. Corey's dead. We can't ask. The most likely theory, though, is that Worley and Corey either. okay. so one, there's two likely theories. One is that they got into an argument. It became heated and Corey shot Worley in self-defense. Number two, Worley broke into Corey's apartment and Corey shot again, shot Worley in self-defense. So either way, kind of it's most likely a self-defense. Sure. I mean, given the history, given right, the history right. that's why I gave you that whole background on Dorian Corey. I wanted you to understand who she was. She's not an evil person. You know, this was a self-defense thing. And when you think about the trans community then and even now, Something like this happens. Do you think you can go to the fucking police? No, no. And especially, no. I'm, especially I'm assuming well, I'm assuming Dorian was a, a, a black. Yeah. Right. A yeah. black person. Yeah. So mm-hmm. no, don't you, you don't call the cops. That's yeah. just going to that's you, trouble. You cannot. You like yeah. so she did what she thought she you know, she had to do. She wrapped up this body. 
you can't dispose of a body in Manhattan. Like, what, someone's going to see you, number one, and then somebody's going to eventually find this body. There always seems to be dredging shit out of the Hudson, you know what I mean? So she sealed it up, put it in her closet. Nobody found it until after she died. So was this the... Because I've, I've watched Paris is Burning also pose where she lived did she share this to like other people in her house like did other people from her house live with her yeah and so this so this body was in her closet the yeah. whole time that she had okay mm-hmm. i can't believe it didn't smell outside of the like she did a great job wrapping that shit up well you cover it with lime and or baking soda is that what she did i believe the article said baking soda but yeah you can use one or the other Mm-hmm. It neutralizes the bacteria. Yeah, but it's, I mean, she sealed it up really well, sealed up that zipper, you know, and hid it behind all her costumes. Hid it behind everything. Yeah. Wow. And uh, it's amazing. And so, spoiler alert, uh, I don't think you've seen the second season of Pose. No, because it's not on um, Hulu yet but or Netflix or whatever, po- wherever Pose goes. They borrow from this story. Uh, in one of the, I think it's episode like three or four of season two. And I watched it and I howled, howled. Cause I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. And then fucking like a week later, I watched this and I find out that it happened in real life and they borrowed it. You know, like truth is always stranger than fiction. That's why I like to read. I mostly read nonfiction shit because it's, and that's why I'm, True crime is so interesting to so many people it's yeah. because it's it's so amazing and interesting because it's true. And truth, it will always be more insane and stranger than fiction because when something's fiction and we write about it and it's so freaking bananas, we don't believe it and it's too farcical, you know? So there you go. Oh, my God. God. It's a great episode. That episode is so good. I want to rewatch it, but I think it just fell off on demand. I'm pissed off. I just like keep thinking... Like, you know, this this body was in her closet while they're filming the documentary. Like, yes. this is, this is That's yeah. crazy. probably something she carried around in her head. Yes. All just the like, time. Oh, my God. I hope they don't go too far into my closet. I hope yes. they don't go too far into my closet. She, she just tried to forget about it. She did put they, it in a closet and tried to forget about did it. Did they shoot any scenes? Because I, I can't remember. It's been a while since I watched it. Did they shoot any scenes with her in her bedroom? I in mean, her they house? show her putting on her makeup and things like that, but they don't. They don't tell you where okay. she is. I mean, I guess I guess I assume she's in her house. So, yeah, I do remember. I remember like interviews with other people on that um, in the documentary, like in their bedrooms. I'm specifically thinking of um, Angel. Yeah. Angel from the documentary. And there's Angel on Pose is not is not exactly like Angel from the documentary, although they do borrow that one line about wanting to be like like. Their like their dream, their dream is to just be treated like a woman and taken care of. Yeah, and um, and they they that whole line they use word for word mm-hmm. in post. Uh, okay, everyone who's listening, you must watch Paris is Burning. Yeah, it's must. on Netflix. It's so good. It's on Netflix. You should it's watch so, it. It's, it's so good, and especially with how much like RuPaul and like drag culture is like you know an in thing now. It's it's just it's really great to learn about where it came from. And then you should also watch How to Survive a Plague, which is a documentary about uh, the AIDS crisis and literally the protest movement that saved people's lives, that they screamed and they protested and they got in people's faces because they were literally dying and nobody else was going to, the you know, the drug companies were not making these drugs and nobody else was going to save them because fucking Ronald Reagan wasn't even admitting that it was a crisis and they were loud enough and uh, they put their you know everything on the line and they uh were able to many of them i mean a lot many of them passed away but there are some that literally still survive because of that because they were able to get access to the drugs i should watch that the reagan administration killed a generation of gay men yeah yeah and and Mm -hmm. gay trans women yeah like sorry not just trans women excuse me um because of their inaction absolutely ronald reagan fucking sucks yeah Ronald Reagan fucking fucking sucks. I yeah. hate him. And if you don't like that, turn us off. I'm going to piss on his grave. Okay. <laughs> um. So, yeah. But so Dorian Corey, this happened. I even though she's guilty of this corpse crime, so to say. Sure. You know, 
Uh, well, let me mention also that for some of my research, I used uh, Caitlin Doty of Oh yeah, um, Ask a Mortician. She's great. Oh yeah, she did a this, little this, video this, snippet on this. This and podcast loves her. She's good. This podcast loves her. I've been reading her for ages, and she's great. And so, um, yeah, even though she is guilty of this corpse crime, it's eh, eh, exactly, eh. It's she. This is. It's almost 100% self-defense. Right, right. It's and just, what the fuck's she going to do? Exactly, exactly. It's the, it's the kind of thing, if it happened in a movie or a TV show or in a book, and it was like, you know, fiction, you would root for that character. You would root for them. You would completely understand their motivations. You would not fault them for it. Could and you just, imagine the nightmares that you'd have? Yeah, oh my having God. the corpse in your closet. But, oh, I can't. No, in I can't. In a tiny Manhattan apartment. I can't oh. imagine that for 20 years. Yep. Literally wow. with a skeleton in your closet. Yep. Yeah, oh literally. God, yeah, really. But, Yeesh. you know, if it, was, if it was the body of someone who was trying to kill you yeah. and you got to them first. Yeah, maybe, whatever. He maybe was a it survival rapist. instinct, man. I, may, I could see that maybe making you feel like you could, you know, vanquish anything. Yeah, true. I don't know. I mean, we can only speculate, but all right. Well, the yeah. end for me. Oh, oh. that was that, that was, was good. That was truly chilling. Oh, thanks. Yeah, and you know, because when you when you first brought this up, I had heard of this story, but I did not look into it like you did. Yeah. Um. So this was like ninety five percent horrifying to hear because I didn't know all oh. the details. Yeah, because <laughs> I honestly didn't know if I was going to be able to. Um, be on the same level because your story was very gross and mine is not as nasty but yours is more interesting yours oh. was very interesting yeah. justine's made me want to throw up though yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just was like i couldn't believe it like i watched uh, paris is burning then i'm like let's find out what happened to these people and i did not expect that it was just like what the fuck it was hilarious I loved it. Sorry. Oh no, it's like, yeah, it's good. You're, you're right. You were sick of the week in a good way. And Justine was sick of the week in a bad way. Yeah. Cool. I can live with that. So uh, now that we've discussed uh, shitting in buckets and <laughs> dumping it into your yard and having mummies in your closet, could we could we pick it up a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. You, you guys have any any sick good things happening to you this week? You got nothing. <laughs> what yeah. what the fuck did you do, Heather? Did you just lay in the dark crying? Yeah, I've it, had seasonal depression dude, this week. For real, fuck seasonal depression. I just want to like lay in my uh my fucking uh, couch and just watch TV. Well, I bought I bought a sun lamp. Oh, did you like a seasonal affective disease yeah, lamp? Yeah, today on Amazon, I decided this is the year that I'm just gonna do the the light shit that they all tell you to do. I think that's horseshit, and I don't think it's gonna work. I bought one last year mm -hmm. and or even like well it doesn't matter it was a while ago and i tried it didn't work for me let me tell you it's not just about like turning it on it, you have to like sit next to it in a very specific way for a specific amount of time well i'll, I'll let you know okay i'll let you know if it works and i got a sunrise alarm clock can you say placebo if the placebo works then i will fucking swallow those sugar <laughs> yeah. pills because like I I also did not like the sunrise. I'm sorry. I'm just shitting all over. Yeah, your you're great shitting plans. on all of my money I just spent. But I, but to be fair, I get up much earlier than you do, so it may be more useful yes. to me because I get up before sunrise every single day. Yeah, and also everyone's different. It didn't work for me. I gave it away to a coworker. I think she likes it. So, well, if it's terrible, people are getting regifted Christmas shit. <laughs> 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 uh. But yeah, yeah, I really hate that the sun went away and it's never going to come back. It's it makes me very sad. Yeah. I've, has everybody seen that meme? It's like, hello, darkness, my old friend. Why are you here? It's 4 p.m. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I'm so atonal. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I it's just been like a blah week. I can't think of anything. Yeah. Good. I mean, it's not that it's bad. It was just like, ugh. Do you just want to link and buy this shit? Well, like, no. wait, I got a good thing. JD I do have a good one. thing. Sorry. So today I went to the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. And I, as you, as you walk around, you look at all the taxidermy beasts. I found they have a huge 
taxidermy and shit in jars exhibit that they did not have before. Which like poop in jars? No, no I'm sorry. <laughs> like uh, beasts, <laughs> like beasts and like lizards and snakes and all kinds of things of formaldehyde jars. Sweet. And there's like this little touchscreen interactive thing where you can like point to whichever jar you want to look at and it brings it up. Mm-hmm. And then it describes what's in the jar. And then on some of the select animals, you can watch a little YouTube video and what it was before it got pickled. <laughs> The exact, ah! the exact animal? Well, no, or, like the type of animal. Before it got pickled. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I love this. And there were so many taxidermy animals. I love taxidermy. I know. Well, yeah, I thought it would be. It's been covered. Yeah. That I love taxidermy. That's true. Yes. We but I can't say it enough. But they were, they were in the same area. There was like a wall of taxidermy animals and then a wall of pickled animals. Pickled. Yum. Preserved. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that made me very happy. I liked it. Cool. cool. All right. I did know. I, you know what? I did just think of something I can use as sick as thing that we can a good, good way. It's a thing that I just discovered today and then forced you both to look at. It is the. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> this is not new news. First of all, I will acknowledge um, I'm very late to discovering this, but it is the. It are, these are websites that um, have AI generated faces, and it's called this person does not exist.com. And it's just pictures of people who don't exist. They're generated by AI. It's extremely fucking weird. And then there's also one called This Cat Does Not Exist. And the cats are really fucking weird. And I'm simultaneously creeped out and overjoyed that this exists. And that's all. I, for mm-hmm. one, welcome our robot overlords. Fuck it. They might do a better job than we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. Speaking of robot overlords, you want to tell people how to find us in the in the net? I would. Thank you, JP. The net. <laughs> Sandy Bullock's the net. <laughs> On the World Wide Web. <laughs> well, one, you already found us um, on wherever you're listening to podcasts. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing so you um, never have to wonder where we are or what we're up to. And if you like what you heard, feel free to throw us one of those five star ratings give us a nice little review we always um get really excited when we see one of those and if you don't like us that's okay just don't say anything at all well you can send us constructive criticism through a, a private message yes or you can an email slide into our twitter dms at that sick pod or an instagram at that sick podcast um, or yes, email us at that's.sick.podcast at gmail.com. Um, you can harangue us and harass us all you want because we've literally not received any yet. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not- excited to get even one, even if it's not positive. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, slide it, slide into J- JB. Yeah, yeah, I, I managed the Twitter so poorly. S- slide into JB's DMs. She'd love that. I'm not saying I'll be nice if you're mean to me, but I will <laughs> answer. Oh, boy. Okay, so until next week, don't dump your poop into the yard because that's that's sick. sick.